Hello, my name is Stephanie Schitten. I'm an epidemiologist and research fellow at the Center of Yeshuvilemi for Public Health, Paris, Berlin. As already introduced by Professor Rainer Sauerborn and Sir Andy Haynes, we will talk today about sustainable diets and the potential health co-benefits. But before we start with that, I would like to give you some facts about it. So the livestock production is actually responsible for substantial contribution to greenhouse gas emissions. It is estimated that the whole food sector, from agriculture to land use for livestock, can cause up to 35% of global greenhouse gas emissions. And as already mentioned by Professor Rainer Sauerborn, um, our behaviors, especially in high and middle income countries, contributes enormously to greenhouse gas emissions. Um, the food consumption is one of the private consumption area that has the largest impact on the environment. And in Europe, for, for example, one third of households total environmental impact is related to food and drink consumption. So the food sector is a very complex system and I cannot explain you everything in several minutes, but of course I will provide you with some deep drive reading if you would like to get to know more about it. But which is very important that you know is that we find the greenhouse gas emissions at every stage of the food production. So let's have a look. We see here a typical life cycle analysis taking into account all steps from farm to fork and beyond. Starting with the feed production, for instance, when it comes to animal products, the actual food production, followed by processing, packaging, distribution, retail, but also cooking at home, until we have it on our plate. So there are many steps, and you can see that the transport also plays a big role in food production, causing greenhouse gas emissions. So to give you an example, Swedish researchers explored the greenhouse gas emissions associated with different types of food items. So to give you an example, it's a very simplified um, scale. You can find the scale here of the greenhouse gas emissions associated with different types of food items. So, and at the very beginning, we see the carrot, which has a very low greenhouse gas emissions, followed by an egg, and then we have the cheese, and at the very end, we've got the beef, which is the leading contributor to global greenhouse gas emissions due to the food sector. But what does it actually say about our different types of diets and their associated greenhouse gas emissions? Let's have a look on, an, on a study coming from the UK that examined six different types of diets and their greenhouse gas emissions. So vegan, vegetarian, fish eating, low meat eating, medium meat eating, and high meat eating. And for instance, the kilograms, um, the greenhouse gas emissions in kilograms of carbon dioxide equivalents per day were 7.19 for high meat eaters, consuming more than 100 grams of meat per day. So we see also that Dietary greenhouse gas emissions in meat eaters are approximately twice as high as those in vegans. We can conclude, though, that it is likely the reduction in meat consumption would also lead to reduction of global greenhouse gas emissions due to the food sector. So please do not understand me wrong. I don't want to be all of you vegans or vegetarians, of course. And I would like to show you another example coming from the UK. Um, a study that uh, researchers as a, at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine explored the current dietary patterns. So you can see here the current consumption of staple foods for men. Current diet is shown in orange, and if we want to reduce the greenhouse gas emissions, we should indeed increase the consumption of cereals, uh, veg vegetables, beans, and pulses, fruits, nuts, and seeds. But when we are looking at these results here showing in this, this diagram, uh, that shows us the current and optimized diets of fatty and sugary food consumption. We can firstly observe 
that there is a high current intake of all these food categories, especially sweet and sugary foods. In order to reduce the greenhouse gas emissions due to the food sector, the consumption of these food items should be reduced. So the authors actually concluded by changing realistically our dietary behavior, we actually may achieve a reduction of 40% of dietary emissions. 60% they have also calculated it, but it's a little bit more unrealistic. So what about actually meat consumption around the world? Mick Michael and colleagues showed um, that the meat consumption differs according to the world region. For example, the meat consumption in developed countries is almost five times higher than in developing countries. 224 grams per day is quite a lot, or what do you think about it? Indeed, the daily consumption intake varies between 40 or 70 uh, grams depending, of course, on the country. High meat consumption has always, uh, has a long time been blamed for a variety of uh, chronic diseases as being a risk factor for chronic diseases. And also the WHO recently stated that there is sufficient evidence from uh, studies showing that eating processed and red meat may cause a different type of disease, but also collateral cancer. And indeed, other studies also have shown that um, increasing the consumption uh, of red and processed uh, meat by 50 grams, the risk would also increase by 42% for coronary diseases and by 19% for type 2 diabetes. So to summarize, here is an image published 2009 in an article of the Lancet illustrating that the food system activities before, during and after livestock production contribute to greenhouse gas emission that affect the climate change. A high intake of food from animal sources have an impact on health. So if we actually change our dietary behavior, we may actually reduce the global greenhouse gas emissions and as well also the risk for several diseases. So what about actually implementation, the implementation of these results? So recently some dietary guidelines already took into account the sustainable approach um, of diets and also eating, providing more um, the fact of gr eating green. And also you see more and more the CO2 labeling of food items uh, to raise awareness of the environmental impact. And I would like to encourage you to check in your country the current dietary guidelines to see whether they have any sustainable approach and also to check whether, in your, um, whether you can check any CO2 labeling on foods or in the restaurants. So, of course, there are several factors that influence the consumption patterns, such as price or affordability or demographic and cultural factors. And uh, this is only one part to reduce greenhouse gas emissions in the food sector. And there's also the issue of food waste. But I wanted to emphasize on the meat consumption since there are really seriously um, health co benefits by reducing uh, our meat consumption. So, thank you very much for listening to me and let's take action. Bye bye.